Good morning and welcome to Erasmus TV. The last few months, teaching at the university became increasingly more digital due to the coronavirus. But will the education stay online after the relaxation of the corona measures? And here with me today is Peter van den Berg, Assistant Professor of uh, Rotterdam School of Management, and our Rector Magnificus Rutger Engels, and later uh, Floor van Rosse, Assistant Professor at Erasmus Medical Center will also join with us. And uh, let's start with you, Rutger. Rutger. Uh, last night, uh, the Prime Minister, Mark Rutte, announced the relaxation of the corona measure. Um, and uh, starting the 1st of September, there will be no time li limitation anymore to organize education on campus. Are you relieved? How do you see this? Yeah, so I think it was really good news, of course. So basically, uh, it means that uh, society is opening opening up more, and that has uh, also repercussions for the university. I mean, you already see it now on campus. Uh, uh, there are more people st coming to campus. We have st study places on campus. Uh, um, so um, I think it's a it's a really interesting and really good step for us. Uh, but w we will still um, have the corona measures. So, like, maybe uh, will the students um, uh, in the future uh, have to undergo something like triage before an exam or something? Well, I mean, I think uh, uh, so. Self check is really important, but that counts also for staff, not only for faculty. Mm -hmm. And second, I think what's really important, even. Uh, when it comes to public transport, the, the, it will be more relaxed. Eh? So mm -hmm. the, but it's still the fact that we have an one and a half meter measure uh, seriously limits the capacity of our educational spaces, our lecture rooms. So even when um, basically the uh, when it comes to the public transport, it really opens up and provides more opportunities for people to come to campus. The one and a half meter measure still limits capacity. Okay, so therefore, and people, we really have to realize that. And uh, but uh, as of the first of July, there is also no maximum number of visitors for gatherings anymore. Uh, what does it mean for classes or study places or university events? Yeah, so it means that we can do more, mm -hmm. uh, and also that is great news for the introduction week, so the in, or Eureka yeah, week. Yeah, how, how how about the Eureka week? Will it be then a hundred percent offline? Uh, no, no, no. We do a mix of offline and online mm -hmm. uh, because we are not going to host uh, events like uh, what we did last year with big parties with 5,000 people. We're not going to do that. Well, so it will be hybrid. I can hear the students crying at home hearing this, but okay. I think, I mean, we have more admissions, way more than last year. Okay. So I think it's really good news. People fully understand it. And I think people, also students, like they, they know now that they get into a hybrid society, at least in the coming uh, period, and this is the reality now. But, but don't you have any intention to organize more events uh, starting in September? Absolutely, but um, you have to realize, look at Ola, for instance. Our big Ola can host about 900 people, but with the one half meter measure, it goes down to about 140. Okay. That's also the reality. Okay, thank you, Rutger. Okay. And uh, despite the relaxation, lecturers across the university has been of have been practicing online education. The online lectures of Peter on quantitative decision making are the most watched videos of the entire university. Are you curious what it looks like? Here it is. This example comes from a game show in which you as a participant can, uh, can choose one of three doors and you win the prize that is behind the door of your choice. Behind one of the three doors, there is a car that you would really like to win. Behind the other two doors, there is a goat, which you have no interest in winning. First, you make a choice. Then, before you open the door of your choice, the quiz master will open one of the two other doors, and a goat will be shown behind this door. Yes, and uh, now uh, on table we also already have Floor van Rosse. Welcome, Floor. Mm -hmm. And uh, Peter, how did your videos become so popular? Is it because you're giving away a car or a goat, like in the video? <laughs> no, no, no. We, we don't give away any prizes, oh. although maybe students uh, expected that at some point, and that's the reason for them to keep watching. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, but we don't uh, give away any prizes. But 
Uh, one reason is, of course, that we that I teach in very big programs. So I teach in the uh, uh, b business administration program and the international business administration program with 800 and 500 students uh, for the first year. Uh, so that is one reason, of course, that many students watch the lectures. But we have seen that uh, attendance or at least uh, students that watch the videos has increased significantly now that we actually recorded the, uh, the lectures and they don't have to come to campus. Um, so at, le at least I think that's a reason that uh, we see a very high number of views uh, on, the, on these videos. But uh, how do you feel about the digital education? Can it be then uh, as effective as, as uh, regular education? Uh, I think that's quite difficult. So I think for the plenary lectures that we would normally do in the aula, I think this is a rather good uh, addition at least to record them specifically for online education. Uh, so many students that would normally not come to the lecture ha do now have an opportunity to actually watch uh, uh, all the materials that they need. So that's, I think, is a very good addition. Uh, but one thing that we definitely miss now, uh, both in the plenary lectures and in the smaller exercise session, is the interaction with the students. So. Mm. We, of course, try to interact with the students. That's what, for me, teach makes teaching most interesting and also most effective. Yeah. Uh, and we have had some troubles to really get this interaction going also in this uh, online setting. Yeah. But, but Flora, do you recognize the problem Peter has with interaction? I do a little bit, but I am also surprised about the level of interaction we can establish. Uh, I think I'm lucky to teach smaller groups than Peter does. Uh, I don't have 800 students, but 60 at most, sometimes 12, and all the cameras are on. And I think all students feel quite free to ask questions, to participate. They use the chat function. I do miss them, and I don't see the small things like, are they tired and mm -hmm. things, but I am surprised about the level of interaction. I think oh, it's okay. quite good. Oh, that's the, the other uh, side of the story. Wow. Yeah. And uh, But Floor, even before the corona crisis, you and your colleagues uh, were already working on digital teaching materials. Yes. And let's have a look at one of your videos. Samenvattend. De juiste paracetamoldoseringen bij kinderen vind je in het kinderformularium. Bij zeer kleine kinderen doseer je vrij makkelijk te laag, omdat kleine kinderen snel uit hun dosis groeien, maar ook makkelijk te hoog, wat zeer gevaarlijk kan zijn. Veel gebruikte toedieningsvormen bij kleine kinderen zijn zetpillen en drank. Hou bij rectale toediening in het achterhoofd dat absorptie trager gaat en niet volledig kan zijn. Houd er bij de drank rekening mee dat ouders gemakkelijk per ongeluk een overdosering aan een kind kunnen geven. Floor, what motivated you to make this kind of videos? Well, a couple of things. Um, building up drug knowledge for medical students is quite hard because there are so many drugs and um, also their working mechanisms are really abstract. So uh, we thought it. Yeah, it's nice for students who have small videos on specific drugs with the most important messages on these drugs. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, our medical master curriculum was built into a blended curriculum. So that was a perfect uh, time to make these videos in but, this blended curriculum. But do you have uh, other classes uh, for which you think that this kind of format wouldn't be suitable? Oh yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, we have some classes, especially uh, well, last year master students, where we discuss on do you uh, how do you prescribe drugs and can someone influence you on what to prescribe? And I think that kind of lectures or, or uh, sessions need to be interactive and in discussion and live also. Okay. But these videos for building up knowledge, they are perfect. They are perfect yeah. for the online. Yeah. But how do you think the quality of digital education during the corona crisis? Uh, well, what I just said, I, I think sometimes the quality is actually quite good. I didn't expect that. Um, um, well, you prepare your lectures even better, I notice than before corona because in class you can be a little bit fuzzy well this slide oh no i had to change that but uh, preparing an online class you really have to uh, be yeah you have to show what you want from students and uh, the structure must be good okay. so i noticed that the preparations uh, are sometimes the key. even yeah and and peter do you also think that the quality of your classes has improved uh, because of this mm. digital change so i definitely agree with the fact that you need more preparation time for online education mm -hmm. and i think especially for the plenary lectures i think uh, 
you you have a more condensed lecture, your information density is just higher, which I think is appreciated by students. Uh, they can do it on their own pace. So uh, these are definitely components that uh, have improved. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the component with the interaction is uh, is the downside of that. But I think for next year or whenever we can uh, teach this class uh, on campus again, we will definitely have a combination of the two where we will still use the videos that we recorded for this year uh, to help students to also do it at their own pace if they want to. So despite of the uh, missing interaction, you, you are not really anti-online education? Uh, no, no, I think uh, that's yeah, okay. st still a good experience. For, yeah, for and we also ask students' opinion on digital education, and let's see what they think about it. The thing that I really like about, about the online lecture was I don't need to be at school at 9 or like 12 or something, so I can just wake up in my room and like only a minute before the lecture starts. And then, yeah, I can uh, take a lecture in my bed, and I really love that. What I really miss in work group is that you have the dynamic that you have in the real world. You have much more digital. So yeah, that I really miss. But yeah, it was just, I think, yeah, you have to deal with the three things you have, and that is well good, I think. And what can the university improve for the online lectures? Uh, I think just helping the professors get more acquainted so sometimes the professors didn't have the right tools uh, sometimes it took them getting used to it so providing enough training on the professors and helping them set up with maybe it's a camera or maybe it's their home setup helping them with that so and i still have one question to rutger rutger sit uh, a little bit far away but uh, rutger do you understand the concerns of lecturers like Peter and uh, the, also the students around the missing interaction? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, I'm incredibly proud about the resiliency and the power of our lecturers, and like these two guys here, about the fact that within a couple of weeks, they could make the transition to online. I think that's truly, truly remarkable. Um, but there are worries, uh, especially about the interactive part and about the quality of testing. So I think we have to really uh, work on that. And uh, do you have any ideas on how to improve that? Oh yes, and we, we, we do that together with the schools with the, and with the community for learning innovation. So I think gradually over the next couple of, uh, the, for the next year it will, be, uh, it will be sometimes slightly different with more interactive uh, possibilities. Yes, and uh, Floor and Peter, so would you be glad to go back to the real life education next September, just like the good old pre-corona times? Well, we should keep some of the things we, uh, we invented in Corona time. We should not Zoom seven hours a day. No, I miss the students. I think we should see each other again. But we should keep some of the quality we, I think, build up in yeah. this time. And Peter, would you still use the online... Um, yeah, so we will definitely use the online tools. We have made a lot of videos that we will use next year, but uh, we will complement that with on-campus teaching where we actually interact with the students directly, which also personally makes uh, teaching much more interesting. So also for me as a lecturer, I think yeah. it's much better to actually have on-campus teaching as well. So yeah. uh, we will definitely have this combination. Yeah, and I think the students uh, will also look forward to be in class again. Okay, thank you for being here, Rutger and Floor and uh, Peter. And thank you for watching. And if you want to know more about digital education or about anything related to the university, just go to erasmusmagazine.nl and don't forget to like or follow us on our social media, Erasmus Magazine. See you on Thursday.